Scientific notation is a great way to show numbers that are really big or really small in a way we can all understand pretty quickly. It's a big number, it's a small number. So if we think about um, the distance from here to Mars, we think about that as um, 57,600,000 and it, instantaneously our brain and the mathematician instant in us wants to start counting those zeros. So scientific notation is going to give us a way to show those numbers and be able to look at it without kind of quickly counting it and knowing how big it is. If we look at the um, two examples of scientific notation, you'll see here we have three billion four hundred million. And we write that with the a base number and then a um, times 10 to the power. So anytime we're writing scientific notation, you're gonna see a number that is between one and 10, okay? It's gonna have to be less than 10, but it's gonna have to be one or greater in order to write it in scientific notation. Really small numbers, if you see here, this is a really small number. It's less than one, it's microscopic. So if you think about that, we, we make this um, really small number look a little bigger by having this base here, but then we know it's a small number because we have this uh, negative power of 10. And remember, a negative power of 10 does not mean a negative number. It means a really small number. So you have to watch that when you're um, working with scientific notation here. So let's try some examples. So in scientific notation, we have that general structure in which we have a number between 1 and 10. And it is always multiplied by a power of 10. So here we're looking at converting 3,562 into scientific notation. So yes, it's not a really huge number, um, but it gives us a great example of how to do that. So we're looking at a number that is greater than one, so it's a big number, and we are looking at having a current decimal place of right here after the two. So in order to write this in scientific notation, we're allowed one number in front of the decimal place, only one. Right now we have four. So we want to replace or move this decimal from the two all the way over to between the three and the five. And that is going to create a value that is between one and 10 in front of our decimal place. So we know we've moved the decimal three spots. That's going to give us our times 10 to the third power. And so we rewrite our number with a decimal now between the three and the five, okay? And then our power of 10 is going to be to the third. It's as simple as that. Now think about this, this is a big number. This represents 1,000. So 1,000 times 3.562 gives us 3,562. So we, here we have uh, 250,883. So to write this in scientific notation, again, I have my decimal place here after the three, and I want to move it so that it is between the two and the five there. So I will have to move that, and again, counter spaces. If you start to counter spaces here, we move it one, two, three, four, five in this case. So we've moved our decimal place five spaces. Let's put this in here, which is going to represent times 10 to the fifth. You got it. And so then in uh, scientific notation, our value is going to be 2.50883 times 10 to the fifth. So we've made a really big number look a little smaller. Converting uh, numbers that are less than one 
aren't any more difficult than converting numbers great that are big numbers. We just have to remember we're moving the opposite direction and we're making our number kind of appear a little bit bigger than it normally is. So in this case, I'm looking at this small decimal value. It is definitely less than one. Here's my current decimal uh, place right there, and I need to move it so I have one number in front of the decimal. So I start moving it, and if, if you look at it closely, where am I going to move that to? I'm going to move it to right here between the two and the five. If I move that decimal place over so that I have it um, between the two and the five, I'm going to have one non-zero number in front of that decimal again. And so I start counting my spaces, one, two, three, four. So I've moved my decimal place four spaces, but again, it's a small number, okay? So I've moved it four spaces here, but it is a small number, which is going to equate, let me make my, okay, which is going to equate to a negative four in my powers. Because again, it's it's making this number um, that's really small. It's gonna start to appear a little bigger than it is. Um, and so when we write our final answer in scientific notation, we want that negative four power there. A couple of quick examples here. Um, we've got this really big number of 765 billion, I think. So again, um, after you've done the quick example, um, you can kind of pause this and start it back up and see if you've gotten it right. So in this case, I know I want to um, make my number, it's a big number, so I'm going to have that decimal between the 7 and the 6, and I'm going to copy down all of the other digits. However, I don't need to put those zeros in there because this is why we have scientific notation, to kind of save us some space. Um, and how many places did I have to move that? Well, I had to move that 9, 10, 11. I had to move that 11 spots there. So in our second example here, we have a small number. And in order to make a small number, it, writing a small number in scientific notation, we want to place the decimal between the 7 and the 5 here. Okay, that's where we want it. So our value is going to be 7.5968. And the beauty of scientific notation is we are taking um, away all of those zeros and we're placing it with a power of 10 so that we have um, we can write our number a little smaller and if you look at the this example here how many spaces did we move this we moved it one two three four five six we moved it six spaces but again since this is a small number we're going to use the negative six power in our next example just 125 um, this is going to, again, this might not save us some space, but just to be proper in scientific notation, we write that as 1.25 times 10 to the second. In our final example here, we have 0 0.0125, and again, it's going to look very similar to our previous problem, except now our power of 10 is what? It's a negative because we've moved it and we've made our number, um, since it's a small number, we've used the negative power and now we have 1.25 times 10 to the negative two, which means 125 ten thousandths.